Hey gents, if I looked the way that 2020 has felt, this is what you get. But now is the time to try and leave this behind and let's start some great habits to make 2021 amazing. First, let me freshen up. <sighs> Much better. There's just something about doing your best when you look and feel your best. And so the way that, yes, I would love to leave 2020 behind and really lean into 2021 and make it the best year possible is through three core things I'm gonna focus on. I think the one overarching thing that I always keep in mind is coming from the failed New Year's resolutions of the past and the fact that if you look at science, it's not the best way to do it. But one is yearly themes. And so the yearly theme that I'm going for this year is going to be the year of proactivity. And the, the idea behind a yearly theme is that basically, instead of trying to say, I want to, uh, you know, you set a goal, which is I'm gonna lose X number of pounds, or I wanna do this, this sort of thing. It's really making a framework that all of your decisions are funneled through as you go throughout the year. So my year of proactivity is going to be centered around anything related to fitness or to health or to work, being more proactive in everyday life and so that that becomes the thing that is top of mind and then my goals can come out of that yearly theme. And the power of a yearly theme is to tie that into something else that you've been trying to be mindful of or working on. And for me, that is Atomic Habits. That's the reason I have the Clear Bullet Journal, which was done by Baron Fig. So you have your one yearly theme that helps you to affect your decision-making all throughout the year and all the little things in the day-to-day. -day. And then three focuses that for me have been really powerful in 2020 that I'm only going to improve in 2021 is really around your mind and your body. And then your body you split off into a little bit of self-care and skincare and then of course your physical fitness. So in 2020, I was trying to find a better system for being a little bit more organized and a little bit more thoughtful about my day-to-day -day tasks and as of things that I'm working on. Cause there's of course the getting things done methodology and you can kind of interweave different aspects of other productivity systems. And I love the idea of atomic habits, which is changing small things that you are doing in order to give you huge results later on. So it is whether it's tiny behaviors or a little bit of planning that you can then have larger results from there. So I've been using the clear journal and part of what I haven't done and this ties back to the theme of productivity, what I haven't been great about is keeping up with it. And so I would find myself at the end of the day trying to go back and say like, all right, what did I do for the day? But instead trying to set my day up at the beginning for success and slow down a little bit instead of just rushing into things, which is absolutely my number one uh, trait, flaw, and to some degree it's a benefit, but if I can take a step back, be a little bit more proactive about planning and that can lead to much better execution down the long run. So if you already haven't heard about Atomic Habits, this is me saying, check out Atomic Habits. And if you're really into productivity and methodologies around there, the system is called Getting Things Done and that's really like a tent pole of a productivity world. I'll also link to a podcast that I constantly listen to, which is the Productivity Show from Asian Efficiency, where they really focus on daily things you can do, either in the Getting Things Done methodology or doing yearly reviews, wrap ups, they do, I've really enjoyed listening to that. As I've been working on my house, I've been listening to a ton of the productivity show, and so I really feel set up, and I have the tools for a great 2021 from a mental perspective. So that is your mind, and then your body. Now, the way I split up body, like I said, is into self-care, skincare, and into your physical fitness. And for in 2020, one of the like little joys that I found through the year is this little bit of self-care. It's like slowing down a little bit, being a little mindful, even just getting like a nicer tea diffuser, which I did this year, and it's like that little bit of self-care, and it also comes back to atomic habits, right? If you do, you improve these little things and you get big results. And, and the way that that's manifested for me in skincare is that my skin has, for there was a, there was a short period where there's like stress acne and breakouts and that sort of thing. And, and your entire lifestyle can really tumble when you talk about your skin, because if you eat poorly, it affects your skin, that causes stress. And then stress hormones can cause more breakouts as you go and there's this like vicious cycle. So tying back to that year of proactivity, being proactive about my skincare and the way that I feel about myself is really important. And I'm always trying different products. In the past few weeks, I've been using Geology and Geology makes it super easy to get a perfect skincare routine because it just has the basics that guys need. You need a great daily face wash that you can use in the morning or at night. You need a great daily SPF moisturizer to protect your skin, reduce your wrinkles, and then something to repair at night. So an eye serum and then a nighttime cream 
to help make sure your skin is looking its best. There's a few things that make Geology really stand out amongst other skincare companies. And one is that it's just a really simple system with simple, high quality ingredients. And they ask you a lot of questions around your skin type and how you want to approach your skincare to make sure you're getting the right system. And they really understand your needs to make sure you're getting a tailored system that is just right for you. You go through the questionnaire, they'll even take into account other brands you've used in the past. I end up with regimen number five, which is just a simple wash, daytime moisturizer, eye cream, and nighttime moisturizer. And once you get your regimen, you actually get a full 90 day supply, which I really like. And it really couldn't be any more simple. You wash your face in the morning, you put on your daytime SPF moisturizer, and then at night you wash off the dirt and the oil of the day. You put on a little bit of eye serum, make sure you reduce your puffiness and wrinkles. Eyes are the number one way to look a little bit younger. And then you put on that nighttime cream with retinoids, which can really make your skin glow. And again, this ties into my proactivity because I do want my skin to look and feel its best, which will then help my mentality, but then also being proactive about wrinkles and having my skin age faster than it should so I can continue to look my best for as long as possible. And then third is around body and your fitness. And it's sad to say this year, I lost pretty much all of the gains I had been working up to in the past. I've lost about 40 pounds this year. For the guys that have been following for a while, you know that I always hovered somewhere around 165 to 170 pounds. I'm 6'4", and I was always a runner. And then I started to do strength training where I cut out you know, cardio and running, and I just focused on my lifts and my strength training. And I worked with a trainer to make sure everything was good there, and my diet. I was doing a 2,600 calorie per day with uh, very low carb, mostly proteins, and really focused on my routine and my regimen and strength training. And I worked myself up to about 200 pounds. I think I was at like 202 at one point back in January and February. And then the plan was to do intermittent fasting to cut fat, but keep a high protein diet and continue to strength train. And then when the gyms shut down, I grabbed some kettlebells, which were, I, I absolutely fell in love with kettlebells this year, but because I couldn't do some of those core movements like really heavy deadlifts or squats, anything else. Uh, I just really shed a ton of weight this year. I'm more muscular and lean than I've ever been. So it's a, I'm now a very lean 160 pounds. Actually, I'm like, I'm hovering around 155 at this point. The like bonus or benefit is because I did all that strength training and then I cut a lot of the fat I have eaten into the muscle now, because I'm down between 155 and 160, I'm like a super lean and muscular version of myself, which is ultimately what I wanted. I never wanted to be you know, 210, 215 pounds and super muscular. I've always had a very lean build, but now I have a much more muscular frame. And I've actually, this is the lowest body fat I've ever had in my entire life because of the fasting and because of some other diet changes that have been going on. But what I haven't been proactive about, tying it back to my theme, I have largely lost my routine. When I was doing the strength training, it was three to four times a week, and it was I would take a day off for rest, and then I was really hitting the gym pretty hard, and I would never miss a day. But as this year and the chaos of 2020 has really played out, I've put my you know workouts on the back burner, and there's some weeks where I only do one, maybe two workouts, and for the most part, they're body weight uh, or kettlebell or something in there. And so just in the past three months, especially with the move and everything, I've really lost out on that. But getting back into you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then maybe a weekend workout to make sure that I'm really taking care of my body because now I can feel like as I've been doing a lot of work around the house, my lower back isn't as strong as it was and I'm getting fatigued a lot faster. And so really focusing on my fitness and making sure that I'm able to pick up, my son is almost 60 pounds now, like he's, he's a heavy, heavy boy. One of the reasons that I did start that strength training is I never wanted to be able to not pick up my kids. And I know that there are parents that can't once they get to a certain weight. I always wanna be able to pick him up, even if he's 100 pounds, like I wanna be a strong parent. And I think it's really, really important. And it really ties into everything else. It's like if my body is feeling really strong, my mind will be as sharp as ever. And then same thing with my skin. If I'm looking my best, that helps with my mentality, and then I feel like I wanna work out. So it's this complete cycle, and that in addition to sleep, it's like being proactive about my sleep, making sure I'm not staying up, or I'm not working too late, that I'm not getting the sleep that I need, which then affects my mentality, and then I'm tired and I can't work out. It's like being proactive about each of the little things in my day, coming back to the Atomic Habits as well, I think is going to set me up for 2021, and I hope that this can set you up as well. I'll put links in the description to the stuff that we talked about, the Atomic Habits Journal from Baron Fig, the Atomic Habits book, which I highly encourage, the Productivity Show. I'll put a link to Geology. You can do their free quiz to find out which regimen will be best for you and check out your 90 day supply. I also put a link to my Whoop strap. I've been wearing the Whoop for exactly a year and I think is the best 
uh, quantifiable self technology for tracking your fitness and your exercise. I absolutely love it. And I think there's a free month if you use the link down there, if you're not already a user. I also encourage you to track out the bicep band. I wore them the the first three months when wearing the bicep band. And then I also put a link to the kettlebells that I use from Rogue Fitness because as much body weight as I tried to do, there's just something about swinging around a big heavy metal piece of something in order to get yourself strong. So with all the things that have happened in 2020, I hope you had the best year that was possible given the circumstances. I appreciate your support as always. And I hope these are the things that can help you also have an amazing 2021. Let's do it together. I'll put stuff on my Instagram. I'll keep you up to date as things go throughout the year. And I have been planning some great new content for the, for the you know, January, February timeframe around the things that I wanted to do this year. And so thank you as always for your support. Until next time, gents, this is The Cavalier.